this so um this is uh this is pretty much how things are probably going to run from the the last little bit so um as you guys know uh we tried working through the paper it's kind of a disaster with us being out of school so for right now what we're going to do is we're going to pause um on that and if we go back we'll kind of jump back onto that containment essay talk a little bit more about the cold war and kind of go back in um <clears throat> with that so i've been teaching this way with uh first fourth and fifth block and so this is going to kind of be new to you guys but it's pretty easy once you guys get the hang of it um especially with you guys being a skinny i'm not going to overload you guys especially uh just because we're at the end of the year can finish everything out so i'll put up a lecture um you guys will watch a 10 15 minute video if that for you guys um I'm going to post the slides as well, so uh, at this point in time in the video, if you don't have your slides open, pause it, go and open your Cold War slides. Um, today we're going to work through slide 25 through about 29, so like four slides is all. Um, yeah, so basically what we'll do is every day you guys will watch a lecture or um, do one of the primary sources we have and we'll kind of finish out that way. Uh, and again, if we go back... We'll try to jump on that containment essay and kind of work through that so we can refine you guys' writing skills a little bit. Um, so for your assignment today, all we're going to do is you guys watch this um, and just kind of take note, follow along with your slides so you kind of get what's going on. So um, uh, start with slide 25. Everything before that, it's your intro slides. You should already have these notes, um, but uh, if you don't, Lucky for you, there they are. Um, so Corona kind of did something good for some of you guys, maybe. Um, so I know we got uh, we watched that um, Our Time in Hell, the Korean War documentary. Um, so today I'm just going to give you guys kind of a brief overview of really the Korean War. And we'll talk about it, kind of that bigger picture of containment. So uh, going to slide 26. So the overview, basically the wars between North Korea, who is supported by China and the Soviet Union and South Korea, who's supported by the United Nations or the United States and their allies. Um, this runs from 1950 to 1953, um, and it's often called the Forgotten War. I'm sure most of you guys uh, don't know much about the Korean War. Um, there's a lot that you can get into with it, but unfortunately the reason it's called The Forgotten War is because teachers breathe through it, and I'm going to have to as well just so that we can get through the rest of this. And we might circle back to it uh, depending on how much time we have left in the semester. So um, Korea, if you don't know, uh, you can take a minute and pause and go look at a map. Um, Korea is a peninsula, meaning it's surrounded on three sides by water, um, and it's right below China. Um it is split in half at this thing called the 38th parallel. So you guys may have heard of that before, and I think that's actually on your next slide. Yeah, um, Korea is split in half between North and South. I know you guys probably remember the last year or so, uh, North Korea talking about the nuclear programs and whatnot. Um, but it is, um, yeah, the North is supported by communist and um, the South essentially it's not quite a capitalist or government but again they're not communist so remember that idea of containment I know it's been a while since we've talked about it so maybe back up and kind of refresh yourself on some of those slides um, but remember that the Truman Doctrine the Marshall Plan we talk about that idea of containing communism so Korea is a great example of how we do that. Um, we do our best to keep North Korea from taking over the peninsula and turning it into a communist country. Remember, we're trying to contain communism. We're not trying to flip the countries, but just contain communism so that that way it doesn't spread. Because, again, they, they talk about communism uh, historically like it's a pandemic, like it spreads like a disease, right? So um, that's kind of your overview just so you understand, like, the idea of the Korean War and more so how it relates to containment. And again, back up and kind of look at, at some of these slides that I'm going to, you know, that I've posted and kind of make sense of this for yourself. So go on to slide 27. Um, so the border between North and South Korea is called the DMZ or the Demilitarized Zone is what that stands for. Um, 
uh, the 38th parallel, it divides the country into um, in two halves, essentially, and neither North Korea nor South Korea ever expected the 38th parallel to be a permanent thing. Like, it was... It's... It was there temporarily, and World War II happens, and they were going to resume and kind of figure out what type of country they're going to be. Actually, somewhere, and I don't think I have it with me, there is got a framed piece of the DMZ from Korea. It's a piece of barbed wire that separates the two. So, um, if you remember from the documentary, uh, basically what happens is North Korean forces, they cross the border, and they flood the south. Uh, they invade the South and they try to turn, take it over and they make it very far and they go very, very far. They pretty much take over the country. <coughs> so the UN Security Council, they uh, they authorize military intervention, UN being the United Nations. So that means the, the United States and all of our allies that are anti-communist, right, are going to intervene with our military. So there's in the Korean War, there's 21 countries that contribute to supporting South Korea, but 90% of troop support is actually in the United States. So that means that 21 countries actually support South Korea's effort to remain a democracy, but the troop support, 90% of that was the United States. So other countries may have contributed financially or something, but in that war, 90% was of, of the, the foreign military that were fighting on behalf of the South Koreans were Americans, all right? So, uh, slide 28. It's basically two months after the U.S. troops land in Korea, um, South Korean and U.S. forces, they push the North Koreans back to the Chinese border. Now, um, they back them up to this thing called the Yalu River, or however you say that. I'm not going to pretend like I know how to pronounce it. Um, and the thing is, and this is what's crazy. So if you don't know this, we've actually fought Chinese troops before. So everybody talks about a war with China too. We've actually been to war with Chinese troops, all right? When we push them back, if you look at the map of Korea, the Yalu River is in the far north part of Korea. Um, and... When North Korean troops are pushed all the way back, the Yellow River pretty much is in China. Um, the Chinese actually retaliate. And under that slide, I have the question, which is why? Um, this is that time where I'd ask you, and then we'd sit awkwardly in silence for 15 minutes until I finally tell you. So I'm just going to tell you. Um, if you look at the map, right, we talk about that idea of containment just like we want to contain communism. China, as a communist country, wants to contain the idea of capitalism and democracy. They don't want democracy in their backyard. North and South Korea, or the Korean Peninsula, sits right at the Chinese border. So if democracy is that close to China, it's liable to spread up into the thing and start revolutions. So China, who didn't want to be really involved in the war, said, you know what, we're going to push these Americans off this peninsula so that we don't have democracy this close to our door. Um, so they actually retaliate. So... North Korea and China, they end up surrounding the United States and South Korean troops at this place called the Chosen Reservoir. I think I've told you guys some stories about this. Uh, basically, there was a uh, Fox company. Um, there's a book called the, the Frozen Chosen. It's about the Marines that got surrounded and <laughs> at the Chosen Reservoir. And basically, one guy, he's, he's sitting there and like when you're – if you don't know anything about the geography and the climate in North Korea, North Korea gets very, very cold and – the chosen reservoir, they they get there in the winter time. So they get surrounded up there, and this guy loosens his boots up, and he's he's taking it off to change his socks. He takes his boot off, and uh, and it's a marine, and his big toe falls out of his boot, and he picks it up and puts it in his pocket. And one of his his buddies says, you know, hey man, they can't save your like your toe, like it's it's black, it's gone. And he kind of shrugs his shoulders and says, man, food's getting short. And so the dire situation these guys are in at the border. Um, where <laughs> this guy was literally talking about eating his own toe, um, not somebody else's, his own toe. That's even stranger. But, uh, so yeah, so they get circled. They, there's a major massacre, but there are army and Marine Corps troops that do escape. Um, they get back Seoul, which is the capital city of South Korea. It changes hands four times between the North and the South. And there's this thing called an armistance that is placed 
uh, put into place on the 27th of July, 1953. So, um, <clears throat> basically, uh, this armistance, if you will, uh, it doesn't ever end the war. So, technically, the war in Korea never ends. Um, it's, it's technically still an ongoing war. They're just at a ceasefire right now. Um, now, it has been over since 53, but <clears throat> it is a, you know, just one of those things. So go to the next slide, slide 29. And one of the things I'm going to ask you guys to consider, I kind of semi-gave you guys the answer to this already, which is how is it a good example of containment? Um, so I'm actually going to post a discussion board. You guys will go um, kind of put your thoughts there. Um, so after you watch this video, roll over, just answer the question, hey, how is the Korean War a great example of containment? And uh, that'll be it for the day. And so here's basically how this is going to work um, each day is I'll give you guys a short lecture or just give you guys an assignment and then we'll roll back through and talk about it. You guys will submit your assignments online, so make sure you understand how to convert things to a PDF. I had that problem with some other students. Um, so s don't just share everything with me on Google. You need to turn it in on Canvas because this is the easiest way for me to grade it and to keep track of stuff. Um, make sure you're paying attention to your due dates. And like I told you guys, I'm giving you guys a grade every day you log in to uh to canvas i can see when you guys log in so log in that is one grade and each day is two points so you log in for five days 10 points easy 100 for the week all you have to do is log in right so even if you don't even do the work just log in right um and then there will be another assignment there uh we are still on to test so i will give you guys an exam over the cold war at the end of everything and we'll you know we'll push through there so if you have any questions again <clears throat> feel free to uh to email me, I can actually do Google Meet, so I will conference you guys face-to-face. -face. Pretty easy stuff. Uh, we can talk about whatever your issues are. Just let me know. I'll send you a link. We'll make it happen. We'll you know schedule time. So uh, if you have any questions, reach out to me. Shoot me an email. We'll talk on Google Meet or whatever you guys want to do, or I can just answer via email uh, either way. So um, check back tomorrow. There will be another lecture tomorrow, and we'll uh, kind of go forth from there. Uh, best.